The flow of water is like the soul of a river. It dances, sparkles and tumbles down mountainsides, nourishing an unseen world beneath the surface. Flow also carries precious water to millions of people every day. Without it, our rivers cannot thrive. Without it, we cannot survive. I often tell people when they are walking out in the mountains, looking at the trees, that these trees are not supposed to be here. The pine trees are not supposed to be here. They outcompete the feinbos, and also the pine trees use significantly more water, which leads to reduced amounts of water flowing into rivers and dams. The Cape Fristic region is just this globally unique little sliver along the southern edge of Africa that has this completely different soils, completely different climate to most of the rest of Africa and in fact most of the rest of the world. We have a lot of very unique biodiversity in this small area uh, and many of them are iconic. Proteas, pelagoniums, these are things that are, are known around the world but they're from here so it's a, a very special region. This loss of water turn bases is just such a huge challenge to the ecosystem, but also to people's reliance on water supply from those ecosystems. The, the interesting thing is that the impact of invasives is already way more than our anticipated average loss to climate change by 2070. We're in trouble if we're going to leave these things in the catchments. We have to get rid of them. We have to make a plan. Pine trees were brought to South Africa by European colonists in the 17th century and planted for timber. The pines thrived on South African soil and quickly spread into the surrounding mountains, replacing the natural feinbos vegetation and transforming entire ecosystems. It turns out that the pine trees are way thirstier than the indigenous feinbos plants and it wasn't long before river flows in pine-infested areas started to decline. Maintaining those catchments and restoring the catchments that are heavily infested is, is a no-brainer. It's much cheaper to clear these catchments than it is to do any of the other kind of interventions to gain water supply. Building a new dam, building boreholes, water reclamation, desalinization, all of these are much more expensive than, than what is required just to keep invasive species out of our catchments. A big uncertainty has always been, well, if you then remove pines, does it return to the pristine catchment state? So that's what uh, the Nature Conservancy are doing. They're starting with invaded catchments, but then they're chopping trees out of some of those catchments to try and look at whether the base flow actually recovers and how long it takes to recover after they remove those trees. The Greater Cape Town Water Fund aims to restore all the catchments which are very important to the Greater Cape Town region's water supply. To restore the biodiversity, to increase water security and just create a healthy ecosystem. We could get back about 55 billion litres of water per year and at current day usage that is about two months of water supply to the Cape Town region. We are tracking the impacts of the clearing on freshwater biodiversity, the rest of the biodiversity, and in terms of, of water. We install instruments in the river which automatically record changes in the water level in the river. We are able to translate that into discharge, which is the amount of water actually flowing through the river at that time. We've been doing it since 2019, so it's a long-term experiment to get a baseline of stream flow conditions when the pines are dominant in the catchments and then continue monitoring as the pines are removed so we'll actually be able to directly quantify through our measurements what the changes in stream flow are through the removal of these pines. Well, what I like to do is to ask people what they consider a river actually is. And a lot of people will tell me that it's, it's water that's moving from one point to the next, from mountains to the sea, perhaps. 
And what I like to do is to show them that under the surface of the water, you start seeing this incredible diversity of habitats. You've got fast stretches, slow stretches, deep, shallow. And just the way the water flows through that stretch is creating this diversity of habitat, which provides a diversity of niches for a whole lot of different organisms. But the mayfly nymphs are incredibly flat, so they're very good at attaching themselves to a rock, holding on in really, really fast flow conditions. And they've got these three little tails that stick up at the end, and they stick them into the, the fast flow, and the force of the water is then pushing the body of the mayfly back onto the rock. The blackfly larva has a little sucker that sucks onto the rock. And you've got the megalopteran, which is also known as the toe biter, because it's quite a large, voracious predator and very fast moving. There's the amphipods that feed on the leaves that fall out of the trees into the river. And the Cape ghost frog quite likes fast flow conditions. They're extremely good at sucking onto a rock, whereas the Cape River frog is slightly rounder, not so good at holding on, and they tend to occur in slow flow areas or in pools. Because you've got this very fine level of adaptation to a flow environment, what we are expecting to see with the removal of the alien invasives is a change in the flow conditions. What we are expecting is possibly up to a 30% increase in total discharge and even healthier community as a result. Removing the pine trees from our water source areas is no small feat, but it is possible. Highly skilled teams from the Nature Conservancy and partners are making headway. And where the pines fall, the Feinbos bounces back. With more water flowing through our rivers, biodiversity will flourish. Water levels in our dams will rise and there will be more water available for the people of South Africa. There's an incredibly small percentage of water on this planet that is actually fresh and an even smaller percentage of that water is freely available to us and that freely available water is coming from rivers and wetland. We are hoping to find a dramatic increase in river flows after the removal of these invasives. Coming to these areas and not seeing a single pine and just seeing the beautiful fynbos and alfredovers, that's my vision for the future. <laughs> <laughs>